when you hear we are already free, what comes up for you? Pure change. It's a shift in awareness. It's the ultimate truth, isn't it? Getting out of the matrix. We have a choice. Joy. Nature. I am more powerful than I realize I am. Human beings are so powerful. It's all there, like the answers are in being a conscious being. Spiritual beings living a human body experience. It's simple, it's here and it's now. You don't have to go out and find it. Eat real food. Just shine in your light so bright. We're already free. You're free. You are, you are a walking map. I've always been free. You are always free. Already free. We are already free. If you find yourself stuck in a never-ending, exhausting loop of trying to keep up with all the things you need to do to be spiritual, healthy, enlightened, healed, together, abundant, or awake enough, this episode with Helena Wilde is the medicine for you. Welcome back to We Are Already Free, the podcast that sparks your inner guide to break free from internal and external limitations. I'm Nathan Maingard breathwork and ice bath facilitator, transformational guide, and empowering wordsmith, bringing you authentic conversations with those who break society's molds just by being their authentic selves. Together, let's shake off limiting beliefs and embrace the freedom within, empowering us all to transform our lives and deeply connect with ourselves and the world. Let the transformation begin. In this episode, We laugh a huge amount, and I am sure that you will too. Some of the things Helena Wilde shares, and you might be surprised to know how much we laugh about all these things, but we do. Why it's important and powerful to speak your truth even when it's hard. Why truth and lies are both parts of the same beautiful story. How the journey of growth and rebirth actually works in an infinite universe. The nature of existence, light topics. Chaos, duality, enlightenment, balance. How you can regulate the nervous system and how that's important for becoming more resilient and getting to really experience life fully. How we all share, or many of us, or most of us, share the core wound of not enoughness. How evolution and the hero's journey are the same thing. And near the end, Helena shares why she firmly believes we are heading towards a new Eden. As always, heaps and heaps more. I discovered Helena's beautiful, hilarious memes on her Instagram page, so be sure to visit the show notes for links to her epic vibes at alreadyfree.me after you listen to the episode. A huge thank you to my sponsor for this episode, Zencaster, the ultimate web-based podcasting solution. I've saved countless hours since I moved over to their platform. If you're thinking about starting a podcast or already have a podcast, but maybe struggle with the time and the technicalities of getting good recordings, I personally recommend Zencaster. Zencaster's modern podcasting stack allows you to do everything you need for your podcast, from record to publish in one place. I particularly love how it allows me to record in the best quality, even though the internet connection in my off-grid solar-powered studio is not the most stable. It records tracks locally, and then it uploads them for maximum backup and safety. If you've ever lost a recording, you know how much it sucks when that happens. So thank you, Zencaster, for solving that problem for me. Their automatic post-production saves me hours of work and makes me and the guests sound amazing. Go to Zencaster.com, that's Zen, C-A-S-T-R, dot com forward slash pricing, and use my code, we are already free, and you'll get 30% off your first three months of Zencaster Professional. I want you to have the same easy experiences I do for all my podcasting and content needs. It's time to share your story. And now please enjoy this full power, chaos, magic, infinite, joyful dance of a conversation with the delightful Helena Wilde. This entire conversation is just going to be me being like, wait, you need to now do something else. You need to, you need sit, to sit a little, a little bit tilted on the, on the right. Exactly. <laughs> and then eventually I'll just be like, are you feeling calm now? And you'll be like, I've never been more stressed in my entire life. <laughs> this is, this is so, so overwhelming. overwhelming. <laughs> yeah. I need therapy after this. I have, obviously, the part of my being nervous and is, is that I really want to make you happy and (laughs) you know give you a good episode to to share and to work with so that is like just me sharing my tiny little anxiety because as I've written to you like I don't feel ready for anything right now so I just decided if it's going to happen it's going to happen 
I, I will be like a yes woman to things, even though I feel like burying my head in the sand most of the time these days. But yeah. So just so you know that. Thank you. That's a, you're a very considerate companion on the path of life. Thank you for letting me know where you're at. I appreciate that. And I'm 100% in to, to continue and to have you here just as you are. Thank you. That sounds lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah but we need more th we need more of that though like authenticity like i'm so tired of pretending and there's no room for human emotion and just like this is who i am today i'm a wreck can a wreck be interesting and beautiful and you know stimulating still perhaps let's see <laughs> Well, I just, I just had the interesting vision, as you said that, of divers who will go very far out of their way to explore wrecks in the ocean, where they'll go and dive and, and explore all the new life that is gathered around those wrecks and, and explore and imagine what it might have been like when that was an actual ship sailing the oceans. So I'm happy to explore the wreck of you today, if that feels <laughs> good for you. Wow, I love that analogy. <laughs> That's so nice. Yeah, made me feel lots better. I'm an ocean. I'm an ocean wreck, <laughs> like the Titanic. Well, right, exactly. Was it an unexpected wrecking? I mean, I'm curious. Did, well, like the Titanic, did you think everything was beautiful? Dinners, dining out, on and dancing, ballroom dancing, and falling in love, and then you hit an iceberg. No, I was prepared. I was prepared for this, but then it's like also the idea that I'm so used to suffering that I just keep manifesting, you know, death cycles and suffering because I have no idea how to grow without them. So, mm. you know, but it's an interesting choice of like analogy with Titanic because, you know, there there's all these theories that Titanic was planned. So <laughs> manifested, you know, so <laughs> that depends on your perspective. <laughs> I guess in this case, I wonder, do you trust the planner? of the wreck that is you in this moment. Yes, I am I'm practicing trusting. So I basically feel like I have no choice because in my entire mind and in my heart I feel like creation is perfect. So you just have to learn how to trust. But most of us haven't learned how to trust, right? So we're we're just working against it all all the time. Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah, actually, there's a, there's a thing I want to share that I have been thinking a lot about for a while now, which is the the caterpillar and the butterfly. So if you think of the caterpillar, the cocoon, the butterfly, and the the eggs, which of those is the best one or the most important one? Yeah, so that's the continuous philosophical question. What's more important, the tiny little cell you started out as or the tiny little cell out of the millions in your body? Or is it your entire body, right? Because the big picture is nothing without the small piece. So the answer must be everything is equally important. And then we judge right. something as more beautiful or, or, or something that feels better or whatever it, whatever it is. It's one of the big ways we currently sell healing and transformation in our, especially in, in the circles, I, I imagine that you're also running in where it's, it's all about transformation. It's all about, and, and life is all about transformation. So yes, that, that makes sense that we should focus on that. And I even hear it a lot in the texts where it's talked about, and I'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this, but like, if you do the, the thing, if you meditate enough, if you eat the right foods, if you do the good things, you think the good thoughts and you be the good being, then you will become enlightened and you will have nirvana and wonderful. And I'm like, and then? What then? <laughs> exactly. Why don't we talk about what happens next? Like, exactly. why is that the end? So, I mean, I'm curious to know, like, what do you think about that? I think that this existence is for infinity and that we've been through this cycle, the, the, the egg, the caterpillar, the butterfly cycle over and over and over. Like existence must do this, like dance and this cycle over and over and over, right? So when you get to the to the enlightenment place, the butterfly face, I mean, you can't be there for infinity. That's boring as hell, you know? <laughs> so you need to start the whole process over again. And that's why we have death, right? That's why we have endings or the illusion of an ending. Well, that's what a good, that, so I believe a good culture prepares its beings for that. 
because I, so I, when I was very young, I was a, t- a young teenager. I was doing very silly things as young teenagers tend to do. And I, I was inhaling lighter gas and please don't do this. Anyone listening, this is a very stupid fucking thing to do. I do not recommend it. And it, oh God, anyway, but, um, what I had is that I, I, I had these experiences. I had them maybe, I don't know, definitely more than twice, less than 10 times. I don't know how many, but where I would inhale this gas and I would actually go to infinity. And this never happened to any of my friends I would talk to. No one else c- could relate. But I would be launched from Nathan, the 13-year-old little like boy wandering around, what the fuck is this society about? What's reality? I'm so traumatized. Nothing makes sense. I'm trying to fit in, but I don't really feel like I do. Who am I anyway? Into, I am, this is all forever. This whole thing goes on. For, and, and then exp- like, that's the weird part is experiencing infinity and being infinity and then coming back. How can that even be possible? It doesn't seem possible. But I had no one there. I had no elders or no tribe to hold me and say, yes, we know. And let's dance and sing and sit around the fire and give thanks for this moment. And so I was left with this terrible fear of that I had seen through the veil and that it was all much bigger and much scarier than my education had prepared me for. Mm -hmm. And now what the fuck? And that's what's been so helpful about things like breathwork and plant medicines and, and, and more people who are in this workspace being able to to bow at the at the fire grandfather fire and and give thanks for the finite that are nathan because i see the big i see that it is infinite but that i also know that when i reach the infinite i am prepared for that through the work of of the finite does that all make sense that makes sense but then you have to start the cycle over again right so you're never yes. just you're you it's you're never just infinite no right because we do experience finite. So God or source and existence needs to do both. And it needs to do both simultaneously forever. Right? Which is hard. Which is hard. But it also like you understand. <laughs> it opens up for the understanding of the craziness of the world. And how crazy all of this is. Because you are, <laughs> you're an infinite being. And you need to be everything all at once. And you have infinite forever to do it and to explore yourself. So yes, it, it, it just, I can see why it was scary as a 13 year old and nobody else in your group or close to you could explain that for you or be a part of that, because that is what ultimately is scary about these things, right? Having to go through them all alone and not really understanding what you just experienced or what you just saw. But when you can sit with other people, who has the same has looked through the veil and you can just sit and hold all the nuances right so it's not just infinity it's also the finite and it's also just this moment right here right now so and we can hold all the nuances in your body and you have capacity and the breath for that and the nervous system for that it doesn't get so overwhelming instead of being filled with fear you get filled with like everything is possible and this is crazy and of course all of this is crazy shit makes sense because we're infinity so everything needs to and has to be possible right right exactly i love that i feel often when i get overwhelmed because i still do get over i mean i I think that's part of the i think i often think that sanity is forgetfulness the only reason we are sane is because I have forgotten in this moment that I am everything because when I remember I'm everything, there is no way to be sane. So what I call sanity is also what I call Nathan. And then when I go insane, then I remember the truth and I am all that is that ever has been and ever will be all at once. Oh, fuck. And, and, and that's intense. So like what we think of as insanity is really just realization about the truth, but also in a way, psychosis is that realization without the, the roots to sit in it and be present for it. Yeah, it's without the, it's the lack of the capacity to hold it. Mm. Because you're not just psychotic, you're also here and you also have a body and you're also grounded on earth and you're also in this moment. Your body is in this moment, right? So that's just lack of the capacity to hold everything. And we see that everywhere. The lack of capacity to hold nuance, the lack of capacity to hold realities or ideas even it takes a lot. It takes a lot of courage and, and you need stuff like some health 
modalities or some health protocols that we can use to <laughs> survive all of this, right? So knowing how to breathe and how to feel your body in space is really important with all these like massive questions and massive ideas and massive concepts. God, I'm so grateful for now. I think that's the gift of God is like the gift of the infinite is the present because it, it's, not, nothing, it's not like it is all happening at once, at least from this perspective. So I always have now to be, be here in when it gets overwhelming, just be here now. And here it is. This is it. Whatever's happening. And I, I believe that is the whole meaning. That is the whole meaning of existing. It's like, what is existence right now? And when you know the, that you know that everything is possible and that you're part of an infinite being, that also opens up the possibility for the next moment. Right? Because part of our suffering, or I will have to say maybe most of our suffering is the whole living in past and future all the time. And that we continue to sort of, we continue to plan out our future based on our past experiences. And that is a lack of being in God's gift, which is in the now. So you don't see the gift that is the now. And I'm, I'm saying all these things and I, I have to just like, huge disclaimer i'm not <laughs> in any way a perfect now being i forget to be in the now i forget the gift of life all the time but i know this to be true and this is my personal my huge personal practice is to to receive the gift of now and that's really hard because we have all these ideas of who we are what we are what this world is what it's supposed to be and all these conflicting thoughts and emotions that, that veils the moment of now. And it creates mm. suffering. And that's it. Mm. Fuck, it's such a trip. It's such a trip. I like <laughs> listening to you. Trip. I'm like, it's fucked up, man. It's crazy because in some ways, like I had this, I have this, I really believe that from that perspective of the divine, from the one that is all knowing itself through the many, that it's all seen with the equal love and acceptance and just like oh. I, I actually I, I think I of it sometimes so too, yeah. the, the what I call the universal shrug where I was having a really intense time at one point and I literally felt the entire universe look at me and just go eh. <laughs> <laughs> I was just like fuck just like ah this is yeah what do you want this is what it is man like <laughs> you're like I'm in so much pain this is unbearable yeah. and the universe is like yeah, yeah but there's nothing I can do. This is the now. <laughs> this is it. This is supposed oh, to happen. <laughs> and it was like a bit of a relief in a way to see that. So, but then that's, so then let's, so I want to take that, that big, everything is okay in a way, because it, it literally is because it's all infinite and the universe is knowing itself in every infinite possible way. So it's all part of that. Then we come down to like where I am today. And I'm curious to hear where you are today, where I'm like, you shared a post recently about, um, about trance. And I don't know if you're willing to talk about this because I know this is a hot topic. This is a dangerous, this is a incendiary topic, liable to get both of us burned at the stake for merely having a question or two about what is currently being projected as, oh my God, absolute truth. You cannot argue with this no matter what. And are you available to go into this conversation a bit? Yes. I just want to, I just want to mirror your 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 choice of words a little bit before you get into it because Please, we say go. stuff like burn at the stake and this would have been true in the in the 1600s but what is so cool about today is that yes you can get canceled and people verbally attack you like they definitely do that uh in my space on on instagram right so but there's mm. The realization I had when I started speaking up during the pandemic, because obviously I didn't agree with anything happening during the <laughs> pandemic. Um, yeah. And that was the same. It felt like a witch hunt, right? But they couldn't really like the difference, like this in this moment in time, just to share a little bit more empowering perspective before we get into this. Um, this moment in time, it is actually possible to speak truth and to speak your truth or to share and to express without being actually burned at the stake. The, the realization I had at the start of the pandemic when I started sharing, of course, it was 
it was like a oh it was a lot to it was very confronting with all the stuff that people had to say about me online but then i realized it's just words they can't actually harm me or well, i can actually just escape all of this by by deleting instagram and not saying anything ever again i am safe my body is safe my being is safe this is a choice for me to to speak my my voice and and then i can control what everybody else is saying but they can't actually harm me through words i mean i know today in this reality it's like words are violence and i just really disagree with that <laughs> because you because you can't just go no <laughs> right yeah oh, i love that thank you that's you you're absolutely i agree with you completely and i appreciate that reminder and god there's so many directions that i want to take this in and we are, we are currently in three dimensional time and that's frustrating at times so <laughs> Okay, wait, this is so cool. Um, <laughs> so one thing is, I also just want to acknowledge and honor that for many people, although, yes, I, there's no denying we cannot currently physically be burnt at the stake. They, I do know people who weren't allow, able to travel to different countries because they had an, uh, an opinion that was outside of what was considered you know, the, the accepted opinions, the accepted truths. I know people who lost jobs and had to support families and had to face... So, so in, although not like actual physical threat, there is threat that comes physically and financially Definitely. and uh, on resource levels. And that stuff is also what I think that's where this system is currently focusing. This consciousness is focusing its attention on and energy on is if we can ostracize the people who disagree enough that they, they dry up, that they don't get the resources they need, then it's, it's the equivalent of of burning the idea at the stake at the very least. And so, so just honoring that that is a part of the thing that some people are navigating right now and who've been ostracized from their entire families and their entire communities just for being like, I just don't agree. I don't get it. It doesn't make sense. So, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. I, I, I mean, and I have, I go through the fears of this myself and I have, I've also lost a lot of friends and haven't been invited to family dinners and all of these things. Right. Yeah. So, uh, I, I, I can't really lose my job because it's not, I don't have a boss. I'm my own boss. I can't really lose my job. But of course I have all these fears. If I continue to speak up about this, like now we have the social credit score coming up as a real a threat uh, to us and to all of us. And of course I go through the, the fears of like how to navigate all of this and Definitely, there are many ways to hurt human beings without actually physically burning them at the stake. And that is also why I feel it's important to talk about this. And But even with all of this, I also see that this is the moment in time where all of that still gets, it gets harder for the powers that be to do all of this because we are more and more people seeing through the veil and seeing the illusions and, and, and trusting our intuitions and trusting what our own eyes can actually see. And we're more and more people that, and we have, you know, the internet and we can talk about all the negative parts of the internet and social media, but everything that's evil, you know, has an equal goodness in it. So it always, it's always, and there's always a balance, even though it seems like chaos. So with social media and the structure of, of the internet, we can connect across the world. I'm in Norway and uh, who, who views the world fairly um, the same. And we have the same, we have very equal values and the same goals. And we want freedom and we want freedom of expression. And, and we want to talk about the sovereign human Right. Um, and so I, I actually think it's just going to get harder for them to judge and to punish all of this. So I think we need to stick with it and be strong and continue to speak up. Because I also think like throughout all of history, when you look at big people, like big characters in history that did so much good, I mean, there's a lot of suffering there, right? Mm -hmm. But it always, 
you you can't get anywhere without the pain of growth, without the death cycle, without you know, I like it's a hero's journey, right? So you take Lord of the Rings and you look at Aragorn, Aragorn, right? So he from start to finish, he's our hero, right? So he continues to meet with the sword in hand and fight for the good no matter how dark it seems. That's like, it doesn't look so glorious to us on this journey. Like it's a lot more messy and it hasn't got elves and orcs and beautiful costumes, but it's still like, there's a reason why we have movies and, and books about the hero, the hero's journey. So if we want anything in this world, we need to fight for it and we need to be brave. And we need resistance because otherwise, what are we even doing here? I think that is like, God is like, God wants to be a hero, right? Source wants to be a hero. It wants to experience itself. It wants to experience the, the, the glorious fight and the, and the going through the darkness to get to the gift and the experience of unconditional love on the other side. That's why we continue looking at or watching movies about all this suffering, but then you have the, the, the epic ending, right? Where the good wins. Mm. That's what we're here for. I am prepared mentally and physically. I am prepared to, to go through whatever the destiny I have to go through to fight for what's good and true and right. You know what's wild about this is that I imagine if I got someone on who's like, believes in every booster that ever gets invented, goes early in just to make sure they can get it. Early access, they have every flag of every country they've ever been told they should feel sorry for. They, they, they have chosen 12 pronouns just to make sure that everyone knows how much of an ally they are. That if we had this conversation and I asked, they would say, I'm here to be a hero and to see the light and to, you know, like that's the fucked up thing. Yeah, but it's also they... the funny thing. It's also what <laughs> makes us like, why are we taking this so seriously? Like we can look at it from different perspectives because I agree with you. And that is why I think like so much of this is like a cosmic jo <laughs> joke, right? And it's also yeah. elegant. Like it's so incredibly elegant because... The people who who come at me and say so many horrible things on Instagram just because I I express that a man can never be a woman, he can be trans, he can be whatever he he wants to be and express himself as such, but he can never be a woman because I am one. And we need to come up with some new words, and I shouldn't be forced to 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 take part in his internal world and feelings we should meet in the middle and have being able to relax our nervous systems and breathe and regulate our bodies and be like yeah we disagree but let's let's see if there's room for everyone still right so the people who come at me there definitely they think they are on a hero's journey in their worlds they are and it's like, it's so elegant because then we have this like fight, good and evil, right? All the time. And it will never get old and it will never stop. And this is where we need to sort of surrender and accept that fact because we're in a third dimensional reality. We're in time, right? So, and we're in the holy dualism where God experiencing all parts of itself. So... Let's just relax and enjoy the journey <laughs> and try to laugh about it some more. <laughs> take it so seriously. Without, of course, this is not to negate or to say that anyone's experience with losing jobs and being forced to take I mean, you can you can still have the compassion and hold the nuances of what's going on and still acknowledge oh, yeah. the pain. But I think we all it's time we focus on what we can do better and how we can try to look at things from perspectives that are productive, that will motivate us, that will make this a little lighter experience because fact of the matter is we can choose. We came here like it's a, it's a game. It feels, it feels very much like a game, like a play, right? But I also believe we have free will because nothing is set in stone. So it's always like our soul's journey 
is always having that free will to choose how you want to handle this. Yeah, absolutely. I so let's so let's bring it again into <laughs> truth because I, yes. I love talking about truth. I think it's such an amazing and I do believe that so if I as a human show up in the world and I look at the world, I see truth. I see that nature has a truthful way of expressing itself and it's not necessarily the way that I that our society has taught me is the is the way of there is good and evil like when I think of the other day I saw a little caterpillar on the ground that was very much alive and was being brutally dragged across the ground and eaten by a group of ants while it was still alive I'm like if a human did that to anything that would be pure evil we would be like that's fucking evil but that's just a, that's just another day in the life of nature like just that moment like that happens all the time and so Again, I, I see a ba I see that so this is one of the things I'm curious about. In an infinite universe, is there truth? Is there an actual foundational truth that we ex exist in that is a shared truth that is either someone is either aligning with or misaligning with? And I'll just contextualize that around the question around trance because I if if I put a group of I'm trying to think of how to say this the right way, but if I put put a people group of men who think they're women on an island with men who are um, believe themselves to be men. And we say, right, start a new civilization. Under no circumstances, no matter how much time you leave them there, will there be any children? And so there is a fucking truth that is very foundational that, that women and men are real and different and that that exists. And so I'm just curious to hear your thoughts around that and how do you navigate that as an infinite being having a finite experience? <laughs> Well, because it's wholly dualism, right? And we need the dualism. We need the opposites to get to experience. Like the source, God, needs opposites to experience itself. So it's it's a little bit of a mind fuck, but it's like lies and the truth, they're the same, right? Because it's from the same source and it's all holy. The lies and the truth. And, and for me, in my own journey, and I think a lot of people can relate to this, it's like, it really is like when you, when I, before I started this journey of remembering and feeling more and more of myself and so existence in itself, um, I heard all these like spiritual quotes, like these spiritual cliches, right? Like everything is an illusion and hate is an illusion and pain is an illusion and as you go through this journey, you're like, no, that's not true because there is pain and the pain feels very real and la di la di la. But the more you're in it and the more your ego is stripped away and the more you surrender to it, you actually get to that point where it, it is an illusion because all is, as a matter of fact, love. And I don't even know why I bother to say this because everyone, it's, a, it's, a, it's an inner experience that just has to be experienced, everyone for themselves within themselves so it it just sounds like like woo woo and 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 stupid and like a spiritual bypassing but it but it is i just the only thing i can say is that it is that feeling where everything is forgiven where everything is grace where you see past the veil and you see to the source of existence it all falls away and it is just love. We also say a lot like truth is love and love is truth, but I don't think that it, I think it's the Holy Trinity. It's like love and then it's split into truth and lies. And the lies is the evil part. The truth is the good part. And it needs to both be there to even have this game, to even being able to have this experience of itself. But at the core of it, it's love. It will always be because when you unveil the illusions of hate and separation and resistance and the lack of acceptance of the now, it's actually God learning to love itself for all that it is, right? So when you're humans and you're full of hate, you're just basically God hating itself because it doesn't understand itself because the existence behind everything needs to be everything so imagine that like you have to be literally everything so how can we hate the bad part the lies how can we keep having resistance to that the lies yeah, and being against that and fight against it when it's all it's the same being as the good 
that doesn't make any sense. So that's why my issue with spirituality is like always ascending, 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 becoming enlightened, hating on, you know, you, you, the, 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 the woke brigade, as I, as I call them, you know, the, the ones who, who come at me in the comment section when I talk about my, when I express my opinions on the whole trans phenomena, you have the equal amount of anger and hate from the spiritual people. I've had, especially women coming onto my page, when I say something that they could disagree on, they have so much hate in the comment section. And then I click onto their profiles and it says like light worker, right? And, <laughs> and love and light in the bio. It's like, it's, 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 it's those two groups that I get the most hate from on my social media. And they're the ones who, who also say, who also chases the light, right? Who's also the virtue signalers and I fight for the good. That happens because you, you're not able to hold the nuance of duality in this moment and being able to discuss both phenomena at the same time. I don't know if that was that like a whole tangent or <laughs> are we getting into I, the question? Whatever it is, I, I, I'm feeling it. I love it. I, I feel like I needed a conversation because I often, you know, I honestly to anyone listening to this and and to you, I'll say now I had I have so many questions that I've got here, like that I was going to ask you. I haven't asked you a single. I probably asked you some of it somewhere in there, but like I'm just riding the wave of chaos that <laughs> that I think I started at some point, and that you have. It's just amazing. So I'm just enjoying this experience, and I hope that anyone listening. Um, is as well, because I think this is part of the, the, the challenge of being in this three-dimensional, having a mind, having an ego, an identity, a self, is that it can often get very serious of like, oh, I'm, I've got to protect this thing. I need to improve myself. Like, improve yourself where? <laughs> like, where are you going? What is, the, what is the outcome you think that is going to be the one that you aimed at? Because once you hit that outcome, there's only going to be something else after. There's going to be a death and there's going to be a rebirth and you're going to be a little baby again. You're not going to know what the hell's going on. And so... I don't know. I'm enjoying the chaos of just like embracing and bouncing between infinity and the finite because that's literally what existence is. <laughs> that is literally what the existence is. And it's also good and evil. It's, it's duality and it's infinite duality and it's all the time and it, it's happening in the now. So the, the true enlightenment is finding equilibrium and balance between those two and having the capacity to hold everything that you perceive and feel and are in this moment but i actually wanted to i actually wanted to just say a few things on the ca whole caterpillar the brutality of it because this is something because i used to be vegan right so a lot of us used to be all yeah. these things and now yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then then we flipped and it seems like we did a like a total 180 but it's not really that but we, we can talk about that later but but the thing is i realized in nature because it, our human minds, like that's, that is why I also think that humans are really special on this earth right now, that we are the, the being that has the capacity to open up more and more of our consciousness. And that is what's going on right now. Like being able to deep dive into our DNA and, and learning that we are so much more than we ever thought possible. Right. So that is what sort of sets us apart from other animals because we have an animal body yes but we're also a lot more than that we're multi-dimensional beings and i think we are governors of this earth mm -hmm. so it's not like we're superior to other animals but we are here to actually uh, experience this realm and to to continue to evolve within this realm so um the part of like the brutality of that caterpillar with the ants, because it it dawned on me when I I read a lot of books and and although I'm I sound woo woo to many people I read a lot of science and 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 um, natural sciences and nature or God actually put in this mechanism that when an animal dies, it's filled with hormones. So there's not actually a lot of suffering, although it looks to uh, the human mind because we have all this trauma of death and we have this like big mind that, that is here to label everything, right? Because the labeling is part of what makes this reality so fun because we label and we co-create 
this reality of what we label things as. So we look at nature and it looks brutal. I agree. It's blood and blah, 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 and all these things. But nature actually has this beautiful mechanism where the caterpillar most likely doesn't feel suffering and pain. It might feel a little stressed, but its whole system, because it is working this, pretty much the same as any other organism on this plane or, or on Earth, it is filled with yummy hormones that takes away the suffering part of it. So it's just an intense death moment, really. And I think what sets us apart from nature is that we started to feel like we are separated from nature and that we don't have this ability and we've gotten scared of dying and it's all part of this game, but we are the ones who started to label thousands of years ago death as something that should entail suffering. And we also decided that life should entail suffering. We see that play out in, the, in, in, a, in, in a big way now with the awakening. Humans are waking up and like, and we go, there shouldn't be this much suffering. Like we see the potential for a wonderful life with a lot less suffering. To get there, we needed to experience all this suffering, right? And to get the suffering, to get to the point where you're like, ah, I'm sick of suffering. I want to be good now. I want to feel good and enjoy my body and enjoy the fruits and the and all this stuff you can do on earth, we needed to start to label things as bad. We needed to start to come up with stories of how bad life can be so we can experience that suffering. So if humans did that to another human, sure, because we have this massive mind and we can decide from one moment to the next how we want to behave, and because we forgot that we are this beautiful part of nature that actually never makes a mistake and that has, has all these mechanisms in place so that life and death will become more fluid and more uh, filled with synchronicities and, and yummy hormones and, you know, good feelings. And what sets us apart, again, because of this labeling, because of this ego and this idea we have of creating, manifesting the reality we're in, the caterpillar before it came to its death, right, or its, its end, most likely the caterpillar never was worried about past or future. It just existed as a beautiful manifestation of creation. So because it's, its mind is so much smaller, so... The gift of God to humans is that we have this big, powerful mind and we have the free will to use it however we like. And we started using it to make this reality filled with suffering and separation and confusion and chaos. But what's beautiful now and what make th makes this a hero's journey and makes this play or game or story so, so wonderful is that some of us are now waking up and we're like, I think I actually can create a lot better than whatever is going on right now because I have the mind for it. Does any of that make sense? Or I'm just, oh, yeah. I'm just like going well, I, in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm in. So I, I, the, I, there's a piece here. You've brought it up a few times and I want to kind of go into it because we've got the mind. But many of us, well, and many of us, have not currently got the nervous systems um, because they are obviously the same. Like, how do we sense reality and then how do we make sense of it through our minds and choose how to respond is that through the nervous system. And so I, I, I love what you're saying and I kind of want to take it into a practical direction for a moment and I don't mind if it doesn't stay there at all, but I, I'm just curious around. So for me, like one, and anyone who listens to this podcast is like, he's going to talk about this again, but it's basically ice baths <laughs> I, because I think they are the most direct and fast route I have found to being like, oh, fuck, I'm dying. This is the worst thing that's ever happened. I want to get out of here. I don't want to be here. Oh, no, oh, no, to, oh, wait, I can breathe and I can choose to relax in the pain. And, and then within 30 seconds to a minute, those hormones, the dopamine is just fucking kicking off. And I'm sitting there going like, wow, here I am. Mm. Here I am. Mm. I am here. Here is life. I am in life. Here it is. And so, I don't know, I got such goosebumps talking about this, but like, I I'm curious to hear your thoughts further on, on that relationship between the mind and the nervous system and how in a way that's been hijacked by our current, like the immediate, um, get everything fed now, the convenience culture that we're in 
and how we are navigating our ways to a place that is more honest in terms of our nervous systems, what our nervous systems are asking for in terms of resilience, because resilience to me is the capacity to face death well, and so meet life well as well, obviously, because the two are together. So yeah, just wherever you want to take that. I can take that so many places, <laughs> but well, um, I mean, the, you can look at anything in life where there's resistance and discomfort and pain as an ice bath. That's mm. the whole point. It's just that it's a little harder to look at trauma and to look at in real time discomfort and life threatening situations as a place where you can actually regulate your nervous system and get to that place where you're, you're like, oh, yes, here I am. I'm alive. I'm able to, to hold everything in this moment. And I'm able to relax my body in this moment of discomfort. So that is like the umbrella of this. I would say like the ice bath, it, it, it's synonymous to any type of discomfort. With that being said, because, like I just said, um, because it's, it's, it's much easier to get in, in an ice bath, which is sort of like a neutral space because at least most of us have no trauma connected to an ice bath. Like the, for people who have drowned or experienced drowning and all that stuff, yes. But now I'm talking about the general population. Most of us haven't experienced ice cold drowning before so it's sort of a neutral space where you can go and practice nervous system regulation so you can practice discomfort so i agree with you ice baths are an incredible way to to train on discomfort and to train to die before you die because it does feel like you're gonna die at, 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 at a few moments there. So when you can actually breathe through that and relax your body, that's how you can realize that your mind is greater than anything, right? And, the, and again, we have the dualism because we have a mind, we're the consciousness that has a body. And part of the reason why it's so hard for us to regulate and connect to our nervous system is because of the separations that, that has been going on for thousands of years where we as a mind has denied our physical body. So we created that separation. And you can look at it from a more positive perspective. We created uh, a, a, a fight between good and evil where we looked at the body through all these religions and all the dogmas and doctrines, right? And, and even not in religions, but even in in spirituality, we deny the physical body as something bad, as something evil, as something that's against us, as something that we should overcome. When in truth, again, the truth of it all, when you start to awaken and you start to get to know your nervous system, you realize the body is what can make this experience on earth so wonderful because we can always, the more we know, the more we feel into the now, the more we accept what is the now, which is living in a three-dimensional reality in time, in physical bodies. So you can either go with the separation and lose your nervous system and take no radical responsibility because you don't know that you have a mind that is above all that, that can, that is actually the governor of your body. Just as we, I said, we are the governor of earth, right? So we don't realize that we have a body and we can take care of it and we can love it and we get, it can get into it. And we can change it however we like because we are mind. We're co-creators with the mind that's the most high. So it's a hero's journey for those of us who start to get down and descend into our bodies. To start to accept that we're in body. So that's like the first one. You need to accept that you actually have a body and that you have nowhere to go. So everybody talking about like, ascending to 5d like they still have a body dear listener a quick message and ask from my heart to yours this podcast shares so many heartfelt conversations to empower people to remember that they are already free this is not a message that the current mainstream consciousness wants spread around so it's up to all of us together please take 30 seconds to leave a review on apple podcasts and share this podcast with someone you care about 
visit alreadyfree.me slash review now. Word of mouth is the most powerful way to spread this message. It certainly won't be shared through the mainstream channels. Thank you for valuing this as much as I do. And please pause now and share. It only takes a few seconds and it makes a really meaningful impact. And now on with the show. So it's a hero's journey for those of us who start to get down and descend into our bodies to start to accept that we're in body. So that's like the first one. You need to accept that you actually have a body and that you have nowhere to go. So everybody talking about like ascending to 5D, like they still have a body. So that's just like, again, that's, that's the same as saying a man can become a woman. You can't just be 5D. You're in a body. I can see you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like the, the denial, which is the lie, right? It's evil. It's living backwards because you deny the moment. You deny reality as it is. You, you're, you don't have the capacity to hold all the nuances. So what we're doing now with the awakening of awakening to the possibility that the world can be better and we can live in more truth and we can live in more love and we can live in more freedom. Part of that is also falling in love with our bodies, accepting our bodies and exploring our bodies and exploring our nervous system. And you can do that through ice baths, but you can also do that through actually standing in the fire of all your traumas and all the discomfort that this reality has for you <laughs> and regulate and breathe and get down, descend into your root, into your body and realize here I am. I'm everything. This is me. This is now. Whoa. Because all of a sudden you get the equilibrium where you, we went from a place where the body hurts us and it's a source of pain and a source of, of fragility and a source of, of, of the, the fear of death to this body allows us to experience this reality and we can actually choose between the two. We can choose pain or we can choose pleasure. And to get to pleasure, you need to accept the pain because this reality, you can't escape it. The pain is here in this reality. If you can breathe through it, if you can put on your warrior crown and your sword and you can breathe through it, you can stand in it. You get to, to, to merge the pain and the pleasure and you get the whole experience of what it means to be human. So that was a whole long like, yes, do ice baths <laughs> <laughs> because that's a yeah, good no, way to I, start. <laughs> it is. It's the, well, that's to me, it's helped me to practice and it's been, it's the quickest way when I'm, you know, even the other day I had a big run in with, with my lovely mom and, uh, it's like Ramda says, if you think you're enlightened, spend a week with your family yes. and I don't even need to spend a week. I just need to have a single conversation. Same. Although, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, and I, I love my mom so much and we just, we're having a moment where, where there's some old patterns coming up and it's, it's been super interesting to witness the unfolding and, and I lost it. I shouted at her on the phone and I put the phone down on her. I was going to say slam the phone on, but I don't, I, I aggressively hit the red button on my iPhone <laughs> and, uh, and I felt how you're so unenlightened. Was. Exactly, you're just such was, a bad uh, person, Nathan. I'm in darkened. Uh, <laughs> I'm helping everyone who wants to be enlightened by by mirroring the devil for them for a moment. Um, and and I I realized I was like, okay, I'm super pissed off right now, and I could either go and like, and I still don't. I'm still working out healthy ways of expressing anger that doesn't cause damage. Where like I don't punch something. I haven't punched anything in a really long time, but that was a pattern of mine, and it and I actually hurt myself at times. And so I'm still working on how to like go there without it being, fuck, I hurts, I broke a door or I did something that's now I have regrets and I have to fix the thing and then my hand hurts or like something like that. It's not, it's not great. I don't like it. I don't like how it turns out. So in this case, when I felt that anger, at first I accepted it. I was like, okay, I'm fucking angry. And I feel like, let's just be in that anger. I'm here, I'm angry. And I thought, well, I've never done this, but let's get in an ice bath. Let's just see what happens. Like my ice bath is going, let's, let's hop in. And it was amazing because I just, within a minute, I was just completely transformed because I didn't, and it was like the anger got burnt away by the pain of being in the ice bath. I don't know if that makes sense, but like I just sat there and I felt the anger and then I just felt it get more intense as the pain on my body got more intense. And then I did what I always do, which is breathe and relax. And suddenly, oh, here I am. I am here. And, and it was just so much more peaceful. And I, 
it didn't feel like I was escaping anything, which was kind of, I was worried about that. It's like, am I, am I spiritually bypassing now? Like trying to be like, well, I don't want to feel the anger. So I'll do something that makes me forget it. But it didn't feel like that. It felt like my nervous system could regulate itself and, and, and move through states more fluidly rather than getting stuck in something which has happened to me a lot in the past. Anyway. Yeah. I, and, and, and that's my whole point. Like with your mom, you could have taken that, that discomfort before you get angry. You could have regulated your nervous system and felt that discomfort and felt all these emotions in the moment, in real time, and been able to regulate yourself in that moment. Like being able to hold all your emotions without having to, to outsource your emotions onto someone else. Right. So that's my whole point. And a good idea is to use stuff like ice baths to actually, if you have issues like most of us do, is to actually go into the ice bath and, and go through some scenarios with very high pressured situations, like really high discomfort situations where you actually get your, because what happens in the moment with your mom is that your nervous system gets hijacked by the stories that is still connected and still uh, live in your tissue, in your body. So it gets hijacked in that way, right? Um, because you don't, you lose the awareness and the body takes over and that's how explosive anger happens. So you can actually go through scenarios as you regulate your nervous system in the ice bath, you can go through scenarios where you, you picture yourself with your family and your triggers and you feel into the, the source of your triggers, which is usually, uh, you know, about some core wounds, like I'm not good enough or I don't feel seen, I don't feel heard, all of these things. And you get into it in the ice bath and see what that does for you when you, you know, get back in that high pressure situation. This. Fuck, I'm totally going to do that. That's <laughs> such a good idea. Oh God, that's terrifying. And I can't wait. I'll, I'll feed back. I'll let you know how it goes. Because, so I, because, yeah. because. We are creators, like your mind is so, it's greater than anything because you are connected to the most high mind. And the most high mind is everything. So your mind has to be a part of everything. So you can go whatever, wherever you have the capacity to go. But because you're in this reality right now in, with this mind, you need to be on board, like your nervous system, your body needs to be on board with your mind. There can't be a conflicting opposition, right? So it's just, I, I just want to, it's just an important reminder in all of this that your anger and the fact that you hurt yourself and you might hurt someone else, that's part of the human experience. As, a, as long as we continue to judge that as evil or unenlightened and bad, it's just going to continue to play out because all of that stuff, the core wound of that stuff, that anger is not being good enough. So we have a tendency, especially in this, like, health community and spiritual community to judge this behavior as bad and evil. And then again, you lost the holy dualism. You lost the nuances. And you again start to judge your body and your nervous system of that happening, of that anger. So that's really like, that's part of being the ultimate warrior in this is actually being able to to hold the nuance and the love and the grace of your, your body and your nervous system and the emotions that live there, that, that is always connected to not feeling good enough and to feel separated from, from your parents, from your existence, from God, whatever. And the fact that you want to do better is also sacred because that's how you get evolution. So the fact that you want to use ice baths or you want to get into an ice bath to, ice bath to calm your nervous system so you don't do damage, that is your mind taking radical responsibility for wanting to do something different. Both of those perspectives are equally possible to be able to entertain in the moment. My, my, my anger is sacred. I'm not a bad person for harming myself or others because I'm always doing the best I can. That's the truth about all, every single human being, including the people who attack me in my DMs <laughs> on, uh, about trans Except issues, them. right? <laughs> Except them. They're terrible. They're evil. <laughs> <laughs> They're just a coincidental evil. No, right? So we all we all have the core wound of wanting to be good enough. 
And that can give you so much grace in each moment. And being able to say to yourself and say to the world, I, I still want to do this, this differently because I do believe that we can get to a world where we're more regulated in our bodies and that we can get to a world where we get heaven on earth, at least for a while. And I think that's where we're going now. I think we're, <laughs> we're all like doing ice baths and, <laughs> and, and going through our traumas and healing everything because we, we are getting to a time in history in time, which is an illusion, but we get to a moment now where we can create Eden again on earth. I truly believe that because it's evolution and it's a circle of life and we deserve a golden age of just enjoying our bodies and enjoying each other and living free and living heaven on earth. And then at some point that gets boring and we, <laughs> and we start to forget what pain actually feels like. And it just like yawn. And then we continue and we go on this like terrible hell on earth uh, cycle <laughs> again before it all. And that's how this goes. I really, it makes a lot of sense to me. I can feel it. And the suffering in it, in it all is the lack of acceptance for all that is and all that you are in this moment. Yeah, more, more and more I see and I enjoy my work because I love supporting people in being okay with being the egg or the caterpillar yes. or the cocoon or the butterfly. Wherever you are, you are going to move to the next day. It's, it, it, you can't help but. That is how life works. So the one thing we do have control over is, am I resisting this? Am I trying to get there faster? Or am I trying to escape this quicker? Or whatever that story is. And we do have control over it. And in that surrender, that becomes the choice of like the surrender is the choice. And then within that becomes a whole expanded state. So I just want to jump into, I realize time is getting a little <laughs> short here. And I'm so excited to ask you one more question. And actually... We're going to, in the, in the kind of patron only um, extra chat, I need to ask you about your meme queen status. I just think you are such a meme master. You're so fucking rad with memes. But for now, I want to ask you this last question, which is when you hear we are already free, what comes up for you? Well, the first thing that comes up for me is that it's, it creates this exciting premise for this hero's journey, right? Because it creates this immediate resistance not right now necessarily, but if you asked me this like two years ago, I would have massive resistance to it. I would be like, no, we're not free. Everyone is traumatized. The pandemic, blah, everything is shit. Uh, <laughs> and it's so hard, right, to hear anything positive or like a positive premise or a, or, or, or a glorious epic premise of anything when you're in the darkness and you're, you're, you feel like you can't see two steps ahead of you. So first off, I think it's, it creates this really important, really brave premise or motto that creates motivation for evolution because it's, 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 it demands that you stop for a moment and like, am I free? What does that even mean to be free? And on the other side of that, I agree with the premise. Like the more I go through this, the more, like we talked about in the beginning, this whole spiritual idea but that is so true that needs to be experienced within yourself that all of this resistance and pain and suffering it is an illusion because everything is love behind it it's just existence experiencing itself and everything is already forgiven and you you are already free because you are everything you are a part of everything you're a part of the big you're a, you're a tiny unique once in infinity expression of the big picture and you have all the tiny puzzle pieces for infinity within your dna so you are everything so yes you are already free and everything that makes you feel not free that's the exciting illusion quote unquote that we're in to get to experience how it feels to not be free to go through the hero's journey of becoming free. And that's what we're here for. We want the thrill. We want the high emotions. We want the extremes. We want to feel like heroes. We want to be lovers. We want to have an epic story. It's just the resistance comes where you, where you picture your story to be like Aragorn. 
story, you know, like Lord of the Rings. Like that is that is my picture of a hero's journey. Not all this like crap of not feeling good enough and and losing <laughs> my shit in fam at family dinners and feeling so <laughs> inferior to everybody else. It, yeah. It's not so glorious, but it actually it actually is. This life can be so much bigger and better and grander and more epic than most of us have been fooled into believing. And we've been fooled because that's the game. Hmm. Thank you so much, Helena. Do I say that right? Helena. 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 Yeah. Helena. It's actually my, I... my middle name. So you're good. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Helena. Thanks, Helena. And I feel there are like a thousand million things I still would love to dive into with you. So we'll, we'll close this off for now. We'll jump into the, the patron only section and, and then we'll have to get you on sometime again. Cause I, I just, I, there are so many things that I still want to ask you about and dive into. So anyway, thank you so much. It's been a real pleasure. And, uh, yeah, I really appreciate you in your, your wreck has been beautiful today. I've, I've deeply enjoyed swimming in the, the wreck of you. So thank you so much. Thank you, Nathan. I feel so seen and so held in this conversation. It's been so much more fun than my day started out. So thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again to Helena for your presence on the We Are Already Free podcast. You can find links to Helena Wild, plus many of the things we talk about at alreadyfree.me. And that's a wrap for today's episode, lovely listener. But if you're itching for more insightful and hilarious content, you won't want to miss my exclusive patron-only bonus chat with Helena. In this very unfiltered conversation, she dives into the art of meme creation and shares her thoughts on why memes have such a powerful impact on our lives. We also explore the importance of humor in navigating life's challenges, discuss how different perspectives can make us laugh and feel connected, and even touch on some controversial topics. If you've ever wondered what it's like to be a meme creator or why some people just can't meme, this is your chance to find out. So. Are you ready to join us for this entertaining and thought-provoking conversation? By becoming a patron, you'll not only gain access to the bonus segment, but also help support the podcast, ensuring we can continue to bring you these inspiring episodes. Head over to my Patreon page now via the show notes and unlock a whole new world of fascinating discussions and laughs. Trust me, you do not want to miss this one. Visit alreadyfree.me now to access the bonus. Thank you for being here with me, dear listener. I really love being me with you. I'll see you next week. And remember, we are already free.